Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Parunjoy Goha Thakurta and today we are going to discuss a most unusual development that has revealed that there appears to be a big fight going on in the country's premier investigating agency that is the Central Bureau of Investigation, also known as the CBI. Now, a report which was published on the 16th of July in the Indian Express, written by Sushant Singh, has pointed out how the current director, the senior most person in the Central Bureau of Investigation, Alok Varma, has written to the CVC, the Central Vigilance Commission arguing that the second most senior person in the same organization that is Rakesh Astana who is the special director should not represent the director. Never before in the history of this country has the division between the senior most person and the second most senior person in the CBI out in the open as it has at present. To discuss this issue, I'm very happy to welcome to the studio of News Click, Sri Shantanu Sen. Shantanu Sen was one of the first directly recruited batch. He was in the first directly recruited batch of gazetted officers who were specially, specially recruited for the CBI. He, he's he's an ace police officer. He worked with the CBI from 1963 to 1996 when he retired as Joint Director of the CBI. Now, I'm going to tell you more about him as we go on. But first, let me ask you, Shantanu Sen, thank you so much for giving us your time. A pleasure. What do you make of this very unseemly fight that has been going on between the two senior most persons in the CBI? What I have heard and what I have read is that the Director of CBI is in Uruguay participating in the Interpol conference. Punta del Este. Yes. And during his tenure there, which lasts about 14, 15 days, the CVC, which controls the CBI anti-corruption wing, and otherwise administratively also, has scheduled a meeting to induct few officers in the CBI. And as they have to take the approval of the director according to the CVC Act, they called for the director to join the conference. The director not being here, they says number two can come and join. I believe the policy division of the CBI spoke to the director on telephone and his instructions were that I am the director, I should have a word in this matter and therefore tell the CBC to postpone the scheduled meeting. From the 12th of July? to any day after the 19th of July. Exactly. And there's this letter, which was signed on behalf of the Director CBI, Mr. Alok Verma, was signed by the Joint Director Policy, Mr. A.K. Sharma, who, according to NDTV, is said to be close to the Bharatiya Janata Party President, Mr. Amit Shah. I'm just quoting NDTV. I know. I read that too. And uh, he may or may not be close, but that is a media reading. Once you are working in the CBI, your closeness to a politician uh, really doesn't matter, but the media takes it up. That is why, you know, it was thought by the founders of the CBI, which came into formation in 1963, that CBI should have a order of its own. As you know, police officers who work in the states are bound to get to know the politicians. And they get close to politicians. Politicians meet them, carry I'm favor with them. I'm going to ask you more about this. Therefore, it was thought best to have a CBI cadre, and that would be secluded from politicians. I had hardly any political contacts. Okay, I'm going to come to. I'm going to ask you to elaborate on this point in greater detail. But before that, what was unusual is that the CVC. The Central Vigilance Commission was informed that several officers who were being considered for induction into the CBI were themselves under examination by the CBI as either suspects or accused individuals 
in various criminal cases. Now, this was very, very unusual. And what was subsequently added that Mr. Rakesh Astana himself was under a quote unquote scanner. And I'm quoting the letter as has been published in the Indian Express that in order to maintain organizational integrity, it was pointed out that Mr. Asthana cannot be consulted for inducting officers into the CBI in the absence of the director. What do you have to say? It's very unusual to even consider an officer who is facing investigation. So I would like to see this letter. I, I'm not too sure. You see, standards of induction to CBI are very high. And there is a procedure of inducting. The man's name is forwarded, his background is checked, and the director CBS specially asks his units in the branches to check on the officer. And if he is under a scanner, even without an investigation or without an inquiry, but he's under a scanner, he is ruled out. Okay. So how was he considered? <laughs> how are these officers being considered? You is it correct? I don't know. You will recall that it was in November of, sorry, October of 2017, that a petition was moved in the Supreme Court by an organization called Common Cause. And in all fairness, I say, it's a disclaimer, I'm a member of the governing council of Common Cause. Now, Common Cause, its petition was, it was, uh, Common Cause was represented by Prashant Bhushan, the advocate. Now, what was at that point of time Rakesh Asthana's appointment as special director was challenged. And this was rejected by the Supreme Court, said everything is in order. But let me just give you a little, little background. Mr. Asthana has held a number of important positions in his career. You have worked with him. Uh, he was Inspector General of Police, Vadodara. He was Joint Commissioner he of Police. He was SP when I was the Joint Director of CBI, okay. working directly under me All right. as SP Dhanbad. So, so you knew him very well, I'm sure. Now, it's interesting, he held various positions. He was Joint Commissioner of Police, Ahmedabad. He was Commissioner of Police in Surat and Vadodara. But importantly, and this is the important point, he was, he was heading the SIT, the Special Investigation Team appointed by the government of Gujarat to inquire into the infamous Sabarmati Express train burning episode in Godra in 2002, February. Quite so. And it is rightly or wrongly perceived that Mr. Asthana is close to Mr. Modi. Now, one, uh, one more set of facts, and if you will be, uh, I'm, I'm sort of reading out bits and pieces from that petition, which was dismissed by the court, the, the Supreme Court. In April 2016, Mr. Asthana was posted as an additional director of the CBI and between the 3rd of December 2016 and 18th of January 2017, that's a short period of time, just uh, about a month and a half you can say, he served as an acting, acting director or stroke interim director of the CBI for a brief period during the period when Mr. Anil Sinha had demitted office on the 2nd of December. And this was the first time in a decade that the CBI had not been headed by a full-time director for more than a month. That is, till Mr. Alok Varma, the present incumbent, was appointed to the position. Now, it's interesting that on the 30th of November 2016, two days before Mr. Sinha, Anil Sinha, he completed his term as the CBI director. The officer who was then second in command in the CBI, Mr. R.K. Datta, he was transferred to the Ministry of Home Affairs as Special Secretary Internal Security, a post that was specially upgraded from the level of Joint Secretary to Special Secretary, allegedly kicked upstairs. Media speculation. Okay, let me go on. Few more points, sir. And May I just Yes, please. Yes, please. There is a post of Special Secretary Security. And it has been there since I was in the, C in the CBI. But sir, it was specially upgraded from the level of uh, Joint Secretary? I don't Secretary? know, but there is a post of that. Right, you are. Mr. Kakkar has held this post. Very senior officers have held this post. 
and they have they later on gone as DGs. So I don't know about his being kicked upstairs. No, I'm I'm merely saying, sir, that this post was specially upgraded right, from the level of Joint Secretary to a special. I'm quoting from the petition, sir. From Joint Secretary, normally you become an additional secretary. But it was upgraded to special secretary. So that is that is surprise, and I am not aware of it. All right, now. On 2017, uh, on, on the, um, that is, um, uh, uh, then, uh, uh, sorry, on, on the 21st of October 2016, there was a selection committee which was constituted. It was headed by the CVC, Mr. K. V. Chaudhary, and the two vigilance commissioners and the secretaries to the Home Ministry, the Department of Personnel and Training, to consider Mr. Asthana's appointment as Special Director of the CBI. Now, Various reports were presented to the Supreme Court and as I mentioned earlier, the Supreme Court did not consider it. One was that the, then C, that the CBI director, Mr. Verma, had objected in writing to Mr. Asthana being promoted. Two, there was a handwritten document alleging receipt of bribes. This was alleged by Prashant Bhushan and Yogendra Yadav on the 7th of November. This document is among many that is annexed to a first information report filed in August 30th, 2017, pertaining to search and seizure raids conducted on a group called Sterling Biotech, part of the Sunday Seria group of companies. Several suspicious transactions, Nigeria, Dubai, British Virgin Islands, USA. And it alleges that this FIR, that Mr. Asthana, who was then Commissioner of Police Surat, had had acted in a manner that was favorable to the group and further allegation significantly that one of the alleged bribe givers was one Irfan Bhai who is supposed to be Irfan Siddiqui, husband of Mumtaz Patel, daughter of Ahmed Patel, member of the Rajya Sabha belonging to the Indian National Congress said to be close to Congress President Sonia Gandhi. I am merely reading out for you sir various the media documents. reports. Media reports. So this Mr. Asthana and his uh, elevation has become a very, very controversial thing. So how do you put all of this in today's context? Mr. Asthana worked in the CBI and he was selected as SP. And he's probably from Bihar, therefore he was posted to Dhanbad. And Dhanbad, He's from the Gujarat cadre. No, no, he probably belongs to Bihar. Yeah, and he he's got, got Gujarat cadre. That's right. If I, he's, a, he's born and brought up in Bihar probably. So he chose to, so he wanted a Bihar posting. And he did a very good work in Dhanbad. And you know Dhanbad is a minefield. Coal the, mafia. You know, coal mafia. And he was not, did not come into any disrepute there. In fact, his work was appreciated. What he did in Gujarat, I'm not aware of. You people may be better. No, aware. I'm merely stating no, there is, cases. There are reports, and these reports are uh, pretty specific and naturally he has faced an inquiry and the Supreme Court has gone into the whole thing and he's having been brought into the CBI despite those adverse reports in Gujarat shows that the people who brought him in did not consider those reports seriously. The common cause took it up, brought it before the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court also threw it out. Therefore, as saying there is no legal validity. Therefore, Astana, apart from legal validity, he cannot be kept down. All right. At his turn, he, when he took over as director of CBI, he was not senior enough to to, uh, to occupy that position fully. He was only acting director. Now, when when uh, Verma, Alok Verma came into the CBI, Alok Verma, as you know, is a Delhi police officer. And he has never worked in the CBI in the past, in any rank. CBI is a vast organization, runs into various states, and people who do not ha have any experience of CBI find it normally very difficult. Vijay Rama Rao was my director. I know how difficult it was for him even to get to know the names of the units in the CBI. So, how, how many people are there in the CBI? 4,000 inspectors and branches all <coughs> over India. In some, in some states, two branches. And it does, it has humongous amount of cases in court 
and it every year investigates 1200 to 1300 cases and the most important cases of crime corruption economic fraud I passed on to the CBI. That's correct. At one level, we talk about the CBI being compromised, being not politically neutral. At the same level, when you look at the ordinary person, when you look at the he person... Looks for C he looks up to the CBI. Yes, they, they, they have far more faith in the CBI mm -hmm. than they have in their local police authorities. Quite right. So, it's an important organization. You, if you didn't have the CBI, you would have to invent it. Okay. <laughs> I want to go back to Mr. Rakesh Astana. You see, it, when, when the government decided to, uh, to uh, induct, him. Uh, induct him and, and, and promote him, in fact, uh, that particular uh, committee, the, it, it was an appointment of the ACC, the Appointments Committee of the Cabinet. And, and the Prime Minister Narendra Modi and, and the Home Minister Mr. Rajnath Singh were... were All were, were, appointments were, yes. of Joint Director above is by the ACC. Uh, that's correct. And at that time, it was pointed out that Mr. Asthana has an outstanding career. And there were... Uh, 40 cases apparently of a very sensitive nature, very significant nature which he was handling. And I, I mentioned only the Godra Sabarmati Express and the Sandesh Syria cases, but he's also been handling the Vijay Malia cases. He's also been uh, uh, spearheading the cases concerning Lalu Prasad. I was coming to that because Lalu Prasad he had Yadav. experience in CBI. So Alok Verma relied fully upon him. Well, one moment, sir. Yeah. I'll, I'll mention four more, uh, two more cases. So it's not just the Vijay Malia cases, and Mr. Vijay Malia is still in London, yet to come back. The VVIP helicopter case. August Western. Uh, that's right. The, the coal gate, the coal scam case. And also the cases pertaining to uh, the Rashtra Janta Dal leader, former Chief Minister of Bihar, Lalu Prasad Yadav, who is currently behind bars, and the his foreign, family member. The so case. Mr. Asthana was handling a number of these highly sensitive and I should say politically sensitive cases. Except Lalu, none of them is political. Uh, Augusta Westland, there are more people involved in the bureaucracy. Okay, let me put it this way. These were high profile and sensitive cases. Very important investigation involving a lot of money. So that showed that his background in the CBI, his five to six years in, as SP, where you are the main investigating officers of all the cases under investigation. It may be on paper being investigated by the inspector or the DSP, but the SP is in charge. He is answerable to his DIG. The I investigating officer is not. That is how the CBI functions. Okay. Now, so uh, he was considered competent and Alok Verma must have relied upon it. All right. L let me go back a little bit and say that the reason given by Mr. Alok Verma telling the, the Central Vigilance Commission that please give us sufficient time in advance before you induct officers into the CBI. And he said this time is required. Why? Because the CBI should be able to conduct what is described as due diligence checks on the, the, on the officers which are, who are proposed to be inducted. Now these were two letters according to the Indian Express, one dated 18th of May and the other is dated the 6th of July. And both of them cite Section 4C of the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act Which of, requires the of 1936 approval. as amended by the Central Vigilance Commission Act of 2003. Kindly explain the legalities. You are saying it simply means that the director has to approve it, is director it? Director has to approve. Director and not anybody else. So that is a legal requirement not the acting director or the, uh, or the special director. Number one, I'm not very clear about these letters because the procedure of induction into the CBI is initiated by the CBI itself. These names which have gone to the CVC should have been forwarded by the director CBI to him. It appears that there were the, you know, uh, the, the, but the, the, the... Were the names brought from outside? So again, I don't have all the facts, but from what I understand, that once a month, the Central Vigilance Commissioner, who is currently Mr. K. V. Choudhury, and the Director CBI, Mr. Alok Verma, are supposed to meet. They are supposed to have regular monthly meetings. You see, this so is I'm presuming that these no, were no, jointly decided? CBI and the CBC have a relationship. Formerly, the CBI used to work under the Department of Personnel. Then after the Vineet Narayan case? After the Vineet Narayan case, the CVC was made 
given that position, the CVI is subordinate to the CVC now. It was formerly subordinate to the Ministry of Personnel. So, so technically, the, the, the boss of the CBI director is the CVC, exactly. the Central Vigilance Commissioner, as whose far boss as, is the Home Minister. As far as the anti-corruption is concerned. Okay. And I don't think the CVC has a boss. Okay. I don't think CVC has a boss. <coughs> he's like the election commissioner. So he's a constitutional authority. He's, no, no, he's not a constitutional authority in, in that sense because he's not created by the Constitution. Okay. But his position is higher than uh, the C CBI director. CBI director reports to the secretary personnel. Okay, now, now here it's interesting that it's supposed to come under the DOPT, the Department of Personnel and Training for, for administrative or administrative purposes. reasons. But NDTV recently asked, on the 16th of July, asked the Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office, Shri Jitendra Singh, mm -hmm. and what was the response? He, and I quote, I quote NDTV, quoting Mr. Jitendra Singh. He says, we are just an administrative head and deal with administrative and policy issues. Now, can the government wash its hands off? After what is, Vineet Narayan. It's such an unseemly after case. After Vineet Narayan, the government stays away from investigation and in induction of officers because then questions are asked. Whether it is able to stay away altogether that's a big question. Whether it has political control, that's a big question. I'm not sure that it's completely divested of any all political control, despite the CBC. I'm not too sure. Okay, I'm, I'm going to come to that. I'm going to ask you a few questions. But let me ask you two straight, straight questions. Is this all about who's going to become the next director of the Central Bureau of Investigation after Mr. Verma Dimit's office in January 2019? Yes, he completes two years. And then the next director is Arakesh Hastan, as far as I can see. But there is also Mr. Y.C. Modi who heads the... He's no longer in the CBI. He's already no, but he's, he's the head of the National Investigating that Agency. That is a separate unit. But sir, technically the ACC can choose uh, an outsider? Rakesh Asthana, I think, is the prime con contender for the post of director CBI with his background in the CBI and with his closeness to the present Prime Minister. Okay. So, are you, can it be said that the government is favoring him? It can be, certainly said. The government <laughs> wants him to be the director. See, it, it wanted him from the very beginning. Okay, I, I mean, it was even pointed out there were three senior officers of the Central Bureau of they uh, removed, Investigation. They removed Datta. Correct. No, it was also pointed out the number of three senior officers of the CBI were sent back to the parent, parent right. cadre in, in Tripura, ostensibly because the new chief minister of Tripura wanted there, but many believe that there was more to it than meets the eye. Rakesh Asthana is slated to be director CBI if Mr. Modi, the Prime Minister of India, has his way. Okay. Let me also point it out, something that has appeared in the news reports, in NDTV, in Indian Express, among others. And, and what has been said that, you know, this whole issue about the CBI, I, officers being inducted into the CBI who had questionable integrity. Now, one such candidate or, or one such person whose candidature was being pushed by Mr. Asthana was Jyoti Narayan of the Indian Police Service, Uttar Pradesh Kader, 1996. He was being pushed for the position of joint director. Now, it has been pointed out that he is being investigated. He is he's being investigated in the Upendra Rai case uh, regarding the person, the, the the journalist who was given the airport yes. airport entry pass, he was arrested by the Very powerful, uh, yeah. uh, arrested by the CBI. And then he has connections with. He, yeah, he got bail from the High Court, and then the enforcement director arrested him. So it was said that he was pushing his candidature. Wrong. If it, if if the if he might have committed a mistake, but it is wrong to push somebody into CBI whose integrity is doubtful. Okay, Mr. Sen. My last question to you, and this is a personal question to you. You worked with the CBI from 1963 to 1996. You retired as joint director. After, actually, while you were there, you handled a number of very, very sensitive cases concerning the Birla Group, their textile businesses, Operation Blue Star, 1984, the death of or the unnatural death of Said Modi, the bad badminton player in 1988, the Harshad Mehta security scandal in 1992, the alleged misuse of power by Mr. V. Krishnamurti, the then member of the Planning Commission in 1993, 
you were a consultant to after you retired you were a consultant to National Fertilizers Limited where you investigated the urea scandal in May 1996 during the 13 day term of the Vajpayee government and that scam allegedly involved the former Prime Minister Mr. P. V. Narasimha Rao's own son Prabhakar Rao. Thereafter you have served as an advisor of the Home Department to the Delhi government under the Lieutenant Governor Tejendra Khanna for two terms 97-98 and 2007-2013. We have seen in the Colgate case the Supreme Court observing that the CBI was a caged parrot. Do you believe as an institution the CBI and its efficacy and its credibility has been undermined more than ever before. I'm not saying this government is only responsible, but over the years. What are your views? And this is uh, uh, how do you react? How do you put what has happened now in the, in the last few weeks in this wider, bigger context? CBI is a good organization, and CBI is one organization on for which the people look up look up to. But then there have been many occasions when the CBI has not formed. Look at the emergency period. We had an outstanding director then, decent, but then those textile inspectors were investigated when they should not have been. CBI has You're been You're talking about the Birla group? The textile inspectors oh, I see. separately. If you look look up your records mentioned in the Shah Commission thing. CBI came into a lot of uh, scanner during for the by the Shah Commission. CBI later on when the new government came all the cases which CBI started against in the emergency were all closed by CBI itself. So CBI has a, quite a few skeletons. Let me be very frank. It is not pristine blues see. But CBI has done extraordinarily good work where it is counted. Any organization like the CBI is prone to be misused. It all depends upon the men in position. If they are able to stand up, then they can stand up. If you are not able to stand up, then you fall. That is why the founders of the CBI did not want that it should be manned only by officers from various states. They had decided that CBI should have its own detective cadre. I was one of them. And that recruitment continued for 10 years. But then something has happened with the government. The government found these officers not easy to handle. They didn't have... Are you suggesting, Shantanu Babu, that the government wants pliable officers? And, and are you suggesting that in the last four years under the present regime? No, no, this has happened long ago. Okay. This has not happened last four years. This started happening from 1983 itself. Is there anything new about what has happened in the last four years where the top two individuals... Now this, they, it's they... It's an open fight. Now these officers, those officers are no longer there. Now all officers in the CBI are those who have come from states. That is, Mr. Modi has chosen officers from Gujarat. Certainly they want in certain cases, not in all cases, CBI investigates 1200 cases every year. A few of them, which are significant or politically important, the CBI likes. Even the urea scam, after all, were all those guilty prosecuted? That was not Mr. Modi's government. That was uh, the, the Narasimha Rao's government, Mr. Bajpai's government, and Mr. Dev Gowda's government. What happened? Only the select few were prosecuted. So CBI has been misused not for the first time. Yes, the misuse was less. Now it is much more. And the best part is you all are talking about it. Is that a good thing? It's a good thing. The, 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 the media, the, the press, the absolutely. all of them, we are talking about It's it. absolutely a good thing. This is democracy working. Mr. Dattas, you were maneuvered out. People spoke about it. And they could not make Asthana the director then. If nobody had spoken about it, it Asthana might have become director then and there. He okay. was not due. All right. So, 
I know you've already written a book called The Insider Speaks. I look forward to publishing you when your new set of <laughs> memoirs come, up, uh, come out. And, and, and uh, I, I want to thank you, Mr. Sen, for being so candid uh, in explaining this most unusual situation that is currently prevailing. Uh, and before I sign off, would you like to have a last word and say, what are the big lessons that we have to learn from this present episode? I really wouldn't, wouldn't be able to say what lessons. We are learning lessons every day. Something happens, you learn lessons. Okay. You take instructions. The, the thing is, the CBI officer should continue to look upon the law as its chief. And if they do that, CBI will function well. If they look upon their political masters as their chief, the CBI will dip. Thank you so much, Mr. Shantun Sen. It's a pleasure. For giving me your time. Thank you so much for coming.